There are three ways that heat can travel, conduction, convection, and radiation. First, we're gonna talk about conduction this video. It's the easiest for us to understand. And here I have several things on this table set up right now, and let's think about heat transfer. So what I'm gonna do is touch these three things and ask you some questions. Of these things that I have laid out, which one do you think will be the coolest and which one will be the warmest? So if I touch the carpet, I touch the water, I touch the metal here, we're gonna think about heat transfer. So of these three components, they're actually all the very same temperature. Yes, all of these have been in the same room for the, at the same height on the same amount of time and they're all the exact same temperature. The difference is heat transfer. Second law of thermodynamics, it comes back to play. My body is warm, about 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is about our room temperature. Our room temperature right now is 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I touch this container, it feels cool to me because the heat is leaving my hand and going to the cool container at a much faster rate. So my hand is actually cooling off. There's heat transfer. Now, if I hold this long enough, it starts to feel normal again because the heat from my hand and this container has balanced out. There's no longer heat transfer. The next thing is, let's touch the carpet. We fill the carpet and the carpet feels warm. And the reason that feels warm, even though it's the same temperature as the metal, is again heat transfer. The carpet does not transfer heat very quickly. The metal does. So when I'm touching the carpet, the heat's leaving my hand at a very slow rate. So I'm not feeling a temperature difference. It also is keeping the heat on my hand. That's very important. Now the next one is the water. So I've put the water in this cup. When I put my hand in this cup, the water is going to feel significantly cooler, but the water is the exact same temperature as the room. The difference is heat transfer. The heat's transferring from my hand to the cooler water at a very fast rate. It is completely surrounded by fingers I've put in there. Now when I pull them out, depending on how the humidity is, there's gonna be evaporation, changing the state from a liquid to vapor. That's gonna be latent heat, that's gonna cool my fingers off even more. So it's all about heat transfer. This is why in the indoor coils, we're gonna use a type of aluminum fin. This is why the metal that we use in the evaporator coil or the condensing coil is very important. The refrigerant's a low temperature inside, the air is warmer, the metal transfers heat from the warmer air to the cooler refrigerant very effectively, just like when I'm touching this. Now if this evaporator gets dirty, we end up putting dirt on it, it works like an insulator. We don't transfer heat very effectively and that causes a problem. Outside, it's the same thing, but it's the opposite effect. The refrigerant's a warmer temperature than the air. So we're moving air across the refrigerant to take the heat out of the refrigerant and go to the air. If this gets dirty, we don't transfer heat very well and our pressure goes up. So that heat transfer is important. This is why we use that metal. But beyond that, we gotta think about how that affects our bodies. Heat transfer is very, very important and conduction is also very important. Many times we're gonna be working with insulation. Our clothing itself is a type of insulation. It resists heat transfer. So if you're wearing a very large coat inside of your house, even though the house is a comfortable temperature, the heat is staying inside of you because of that jacket. It's slowing down heat transfer. We build our houses with insulation between the walls. That insulation slows down the thermal heat transfer of conduction. As the heat conducts across those metals or those different materials, it slows that process down. If we had a house built out of completely metal, it would be a significant difference. If it had it just metal, the sunshine on this metal would transfer the heat from outside inside very fast. In the winter time, the heat would transfer from inside the house outside very quickly. So having that insulation inside is very important. Later on, we're gonna talk about walk-in boxes. And these walk-in boxes are very important because they need to slow down heat transfer. But they have aluminum on it, that aluminum so it can be cleaned, but they need to make sure that aluminum doesn't touch the two sides. Here we can see there's wood in between. And if you look in the middle, there's just a whole bunch of insulation. Now I prefer the foam ones over this bat, but your house is very similar to this. As that heat hits this wall, the heat has to go through this material and it slows the transfer of heat down before it comes inside. So your air conditioner is taking heat from inside, putting it back outside, and that heat's constantly trying to get back in. In the winter, it's the opposite. The heat's trying to get out. So we keep putting heat back in, and the heat keeps trying to get it back out. So heat transfer is very, very important. The type of material we use. Wood has a different heat transfer property than, say, the insulation. This is where U value and R value comes into place. But simply, let's think about our bodies, how we transfer heat. If you sit down on a big, fluffy, soft couch, 
that couch works like insulation. So your body is warmer than the air temperature, so the heat soaks into that couch and doesn't transfer heat very well, so you can feel warmer. If you sit down in a chair that's woven, the heat can transfer away from your body much more effectively. There's a lot of air moving around your body and the heat can leave, travel through your body to the air outside much faster. Heat transfer is going to be very, very, very important. Also think about floors. People like to have carpet floors so when they're putting their feet on that carpet, there's very little heat transfer from their foot to the lower temperature floor. However, if you have wood floors or even more significant, the tile floors, there's significant heat transfer from your foot to the tile floors. So tile floors always feel cooler. Now in other warmer climates, in the south for example, you'll see a very popular with people having tile floors. That way they want that heat transfer because it helps them feel cooler in the summertime. In the north, you want to make sure that floor is warm so that it doesn't feel cold. And that's where radiant heat comes in. They actually put heaters inside the floor. It's really misleading because radiant heaters are really conduction heaters. It's conducting heat from the fluid, usually water, into that floor so it feels nice and warm. But conduction, it's by direct contact. If we're gonna write a definition down for conduction, it's heat transfer by direct contact. Molecule touching molecule. So when I heat this rod, the heat goes from one side of this rod over to the other side of the rod until it's equilibrium. Let's take a look at this. Our buddy, the torch. Now, if we go to heat this rod, the heat's gonna transfer from a warmer area down to a lower area. You've probably heard the term heat rises, but that's not exactly true. Heat can move in any direction. We'll show you. So if I heat this rod up, if heat rises, my hand will not get hot, but I'm heating this rod up and I can feel the temperature of this rod warming up. The heat's moving down, it's moving down the rod to my hand. It's getting warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer until finally I'm gonna have to drop it. That's my hot rod, by the way. I keep it inside the garage. But the heat's traveling down. The heat is moving from one point to another. That is conduction. When you touch doors or you're touching anything, it's conduction. Also, the air around you, you're conducting heat from your body to the air. So conduction is a very important part. And the refrigeration side, we're transferring heat by conduction in this example because heat's conducting from the air touching this to the aluminum and it's conducting from the aluminum to the copper pipes in the middle, from the copper pipes in the middle to the refrigerant. All of that is conduction via direct contact. So it's very important that is conduction, direct contact, molecule touching molecule. Now let's move on to the next subject.